Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is called Creating a Turntable Animation in Blender. So after modeling or texturing a 3D asset, you want to show it off from multiple angles, and the best way to do this is to create a turntable. And turntables are also a very common method for showing off your work at any game or film studio, so it's a good thing to know. So here's an example of how to do this inside a Blender. Okay, so here we are inside a Blender, and uh, this is a spaceship that I'm going to be um, spinning around in a turntable. So step number one is to create an axis. And the way you do that is you go to add and then empty, and then oh, let's use plane axis. And what this is, is this is the point around which the model is going to spin. And you can see it here, although it's a little tough to see because it's of course small and it's in the middle of the spaceship. So one thing you can do is you can go down to its properties and change its size, like for example, if I were to do 10, you can see the axis is much bigger now. Um, you can also change to different things in here. So for example, you can do a, a cube if you want to do a, a different shape. Um, and re remember, regardless of what you choose, it doesn't change anything about how it functions. It's just a display thing. So maybe I'll choose cube and then make it a little bit smaller. And um, yeah, I think that'll work for this. So okay, so the next thing you do is you select all the objects you want as part of your turntable. Uh, in this case, it's, there's only one, which is the ship, but if there are more than one object, you select all the objects together. And then the final thing you select is your empty. And then you do control P, which allows you to parent, and you choose the first one, which is object. And so what this does is now you have your ship or the other things um, that you selected, and they're all parented under the empty. Okay, so the next thing is to grab the empty itself and then go to the object property panel here. And we are going to rotate it around and we're going to rotate it um, on the timeline here. So the timeline is currently going from 1 to uh, 250. So we will start on frame 1. There we go. And what we're going to do is we want to create a key. And uh, the key will basically lock it in place at this point in time. And so the way you do that is you float over this area here, and then you hit I. And you can see this turned yellow, and that means you now have a keyframe. And you can see the keyframe down here. If you move, it's right down there. So the next is we move to the end, which is 250. And then we do one more. So we're going to go to 251. And we now want to make another keyframe, but this time we want the thing to rotate 360 degrees around the uh, Z axis. So if we go here, we type 360, and then again we hit I, and it turns yellow again. And now if we go here and we move around, you can see that the thing is spinning. Okay, so before we finish this part, there's one more thing that we have to do, and that is right now, um, when you create um, a animation like this, it actually speeds up from this key and then gets faster and faster and then slows down as it approaches this key here. And that is not what we want because what we want it to be a linear, just rotate um, you know, in a linear fashion around that point without any sort of uh, ease in or ease out. So the way you do that is you first of all select the two keys and you can use uh, shift in order to select the two of them. Then with your cursor on the timeline, you hit T, and then here are the interpolation methods, and what you want is linear. And now, when you go through here, it's gonna move in a linear fashion around that middle point. Okay, and now that that's done, uh, we go to Output Properties, and uh, you can set whatever resolution you want. In this case, I've already uh, preset the resolution for what I'm looking for. And then down at the bottom here, under Output, you choose whatever directory you want on your hard drive. In this case, um, it's going to go to the temp directory, and that's where you want to write out the file. And then there's a couple different options. You can either write out a bunch of separate frames, like for example, you can write out a bunch of uh, PNG files and then use some other application, like a compositor or something, to put it together. Or in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make an MPEG video. So this is an MP4 file, which is going to take all the individual frames and then um, stick them together in one, uh, one file, which is good enough for uh, you know, preview purposes of what I'm doing here. And then the final step, once I make sure that this is all set up the way I want it to, is I go up to Render, and I hit Render Animation, and uh, let's now see what the final result is. Okay, so here's the final result, and you can see that we're seeing a full 360 view of the spaceship itself, and I have this looped just so that um, it'll just keep going around and around. 
And one final note about making these sort of turntables is that you might notice that instead of rotating the camera in a 360 around the object, I instead took the objects and then rotate those around in, in a 360 manner. And the reason for that is because when you, if you do it the other way, where you actually rotate the camera around, and if the lighting is from the same angle and doesn't move in world space, what you end up doing is you'll go around the back of the object and it'll be black because there's no lighting back there. And that's not very helpful because you want to make sure you have lighting everywhere so that you can see uh, the surface. Now you can, of course, add more lights in the back or try to make sure the lighting looks good from all angles, but doing that usually ends up um, getting rid of any shadows you have on your object. And seeing shadows is part of being able to evaluate the surface, which is what the whole point is of doing uh, the turntable in the first place. So it can be done and there's ways of doing it. You can you know, attach the light to the camera, et cetera, et cetera. But I just think it's better to rotate the model around and leave your uh, camera and your lighting in, in one place. Uh, the only disadvantage there is that if you um, add more objects or tweak objects, you might need to reparent it to your empty. Uh, but other than that, um, in my opinion, this is the way to go. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you want more tutorials like this, please go to neilblevins.com and go to the art lesson section. Or if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.